Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. I am your faithful, committed, spiritual leader, Darren Baldwin, and I'm here with my wife, Laura, my one and only, one and only co-host. Yeah, we had to get rid of that riffraff from last week. (laughs) Uh, We we threw him out of here. Well, I had to be here for the 104th episode. Which, if you know how to do math... Right, that's year number two yeah. in the books. The after mark. today, this Super is the two-year awesome. mark. Yeah. I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, uh, really awesome. <laughs> time flies when you're uh, doing God's yeah. will, huh? So we have 104 podcasts, so you can go back and start at the beginning if you'd like, or so a, a lot of content that you can scroll. It is, through and, and uh, feed on. we were just talking last week. Uh, uh, just some of the the guests that we've had over, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the two years been some awesome subject matter. Uh, good Lord, I mean, I can't think of one that I did not enjoy. Yeah. That I really sense was was something that was powerful and you could take home. You know, the cool thing about the podcast format too, Laura, is um, I started you know going back to the gym and. Uh, you know, I could just pop my headphones in. I don't have to yeah. you know, necessarily watch it. I can download it and just let yeah. it play. I watch or I listen to the podcast every Wednesday morning while I'm getting ready. Does it make your day that much better? It does. Is that your midweek? Uh, <laughs> is that your uh, uh, your my word? midweek boost? Your yeah, midweek boost <laughs> gets me over the hump. Yeah, <laughs> so powerful. Uh, just doing anything for the Lord is so powerful. We were I was sharing with another minister uh, recently. You know, the fact that God takes us out of the world and takes us out of sin, recreates us on the inside, gives us a purpose for Mm. our lives that's not necessarily designed to fit into the world, but it's designed to fit into his plan. I mean, what an honor. Yeah. Uh, You know, what an honor for me to wake up every day and do now what I really love doing because it's my call and man, it's just a great time to be alive. And um, amen. amen. I'm glad to be doing this with you as well. Same here. Do you mean it? <laughs> I think I do. No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know you I do. do. <laughs> you know, um, I I I really do have a lot of respect for you, Laura, and that you do the will of God. And um, you're just you're a doer. You get out there. I'm and a doer of the word. <laughs> you're a doer I'm not of the. Just to hear. <laughs> powerful. Well, anyway, uh, Laura and I were talking uh, before the podcast uh, briefly about uh, just discussing um, a subject that has really been kind of thrust upon us in these last couple of years, Uh, something that I had gotten acquainted with, you know, really after being saved, and uh, it kind of just has grown in my heart all these years, and that is the subject of kind of, well, we'll say it, call it worldliness, but... It's really the the subject, Laura, of coming out of the world yeah, system, pulling away, yeah, yeah, and kind of getting uh, in, you know, to what God has for us more fully. I, I've been saying this for years that Christianity is it's not designed to fit into the world system. It's yeah. not built uh, yeah. to fit into the world system. So. Trying to fit Christianity in the big picture of what the world's doing is an, an absolute incorrect approach because yeah. God, the way Christianity set up, it is an absolute contrary yes. message yes. to yeah. the message of the world. Well, the scripture says like we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So if we see ourselves of just like everyone else, then we're going to act like the world, respond like the world responds, view things the way that they view things. But if you get that that heavenly perspective mm. and then realize like, I am not only a citizen of heaven, but I'm an ambassador of heaven. Yeah. And so I'm here on this earth representing you know my homeland, where I come from, where I'm headed. And I think it'll just give you a completely different perspective of how you should act, how you should respond, how you view things. It puts things into perspective. I, I agree 100%. And if you look at, you know, the church's overall performance uh, in the last, you know, whatever, handful of decades, you'll see that something's emerged in 
the last number of years uh, in a more you know definite way. And it's what I haven't referred to it as this, but other people call it the social justice gospel. Mm-hmm. And here's what happens when the church tries to fit into the world. It it starts adopting the world's agendas. Yeah. And I don't mean that in a negative way mm-hmm. because there's there's a lot of things in the world that need <laughs> justice um, brought to uh, yeah. that any particular area. But I I was praying about this one time, Laura, and the Lord spoke to me, ministered to my heart uh, in an inward impression and said, I never called me or the church to fix the world. You can't fix the world, right? Yeah. You can't fix the world. Yeah. Uh, but he actually gave us a method that we have to preach the gospel and the word of God in hopes that men, women, you know, people in the earth will hear the message and they will actually turn from the darkness that they're in and actually receive what Jesus has done and be born again. Yeah. So we can have endless programs uh, to try to fix, you know, things that are broken in the world, but it's all going to be futile because the reason the world's in the condition that it's in is because of sin. That's it. And I'm not talking about, you know, you just sinning. No, the world is in the condition it's in yeah. because man is fallen. Yeah. They have yeah. fallen and from the Lord and they're separated from God in a sinful state. Yeah. Even a person that seems good on the outside, if they're not born again, they are separated from God mm-hmm. and in living in darkness. So it's it's just a it's a huge thing now with the church just kind of trying to comply and fit in and you know we went and, through an appeal an appeal, appeal to the world but the problem is is when you try to appeal the world you really lose the power you know of the church and, Say and what it, my goodness. and what we're called to demonstrate it's like the world doesn't need us to look like them and to appeal to them, you know, the way that the world appeals to them, they need to see something different. And there's got to be a demonstration of power. Mm. I've been saying for weeks and maybe months now, it's not the flowery messages, the eloquent words that we can speak that's going to grab hold of, of somebody's heart. I mean, that can, you know, I've heard moving speeches before and I'm moved by it, yeah. but that's not going to make a permanent change. No. But what's going to make a permanent change is the power power of God. Yeah. And and a lot of the church has lost that and I think a lot of it that has to do with we're so we've become enamored with the world and we're in tangled with the world yeah. and really we're in bed with the world you know well, that's, and and, that's and, scriptural. and and yeah and and we probably it's it's a slow fade yeah. I think there was a song years ago like it's a slow fade it doesn't happen overnight it's just a slow gradually gradually you know what was it lot and his family yeah like they ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah, but that's not where, that's they, not where started they started out, you yeah. know? They, but they was, <laughs> pitched their tents looking in that Towards, direction. Exactly. And then the next thing it picks up, they're living in yeah, Sodom. I'm yeah. like, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what you look at is really the direction you're headed, yeah. you know? And that's why, yeah. God, that'll that's, preach yeah, right there. That's, that's why you've got to keep an, an eternal perspective. Because if you're thinking mm. on the heavenly kingdom, you're seeing yourself as a heavenly ambassador. You've, you've got your watch on and you realize, okay, time is short. This thing's coming to an end and I've got to proclaim mm. the good news. I've got to speak God's word. I've got, you know, there should be demonstration and power to try and pull in as many as we can, you know, before we're out of here, before this thing yeah. is wrapped up. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, going back to the thing about, you know, the world and, and worldliness, you know, I've been in church my whole life as, as you have. And there's a, a religious legalistic side to this yeah. message that you condemn people. And that's not God's message. No. God's message is one that pulls us up. Yeah. Uh, but there is a message of us coming out of the yeah. world and it's not a legalistic thing. It's actually an opportunity yeah. for us to come out of what's already darkness and, and fail and failure and come into the kingdom of light and actually begin to operate from that and have an effect on the world, uh, you know, more than we ever could. So you nailed it, Laura. I mean, I think the more you read, like in the book of Acts, like about the early church, like it just, it kind of, you develop a hunger for like, wow, 
like I really want to see some of those things. Yes. Like we we should be seeing some of those things, experiencing those things, but there was not an attachment to the world with those early believers. I mean, they left everything, forsook everything. They wow. gave everything, you know, to the church and people who had need, they were able to distribute. I mean, they just it was like they gave their lives. They gave their lives for the message of of the gospel. And and so like I just feel like if you were to focus on the things of God, focus on what that early church had. It's like there's a hunger that'll begin to grow. So instead of your eyes focus on the world and enamored with the world, and then you know you're sucked into that. If you begin to see like this is a picture of what we're called to walk in, then I think it gets a little easier to pull away from the world and to begin making that trek towards, you know, Thanks heavenly. To God. Yeah. yeah. You said something earlier just about the world, I'm, I'm sorry, the church trying to look like the world yeah. to try to appeal to the world. And you said the world doesn't need more of the world. What did you say the other week in church? It was so powerful. You said something like, if the world accepts you, then. Oh, yeah, beware. Yeah, because if you the were, world accepts us, beware. Because you said like about Jesus. Yeah, Jesus said, like, if yeah. they hate you, don't forget they yes. hated me. Yes. Which is. Je Which is interesting because you don't hear that. You hear a lot of intellectual Christians, you know, that like to <laughs> tell you that, you know, they know 5,200 scriptures and they've got this Zero, degree 5, and that. 5,200 scriptures and I no just power. <laughs> gag me. But, you know, they, they're going to tell you about your business. But, you know, they're, they're all about mm. Jesus was a loving God and a compassionate God. Well, he was loving. Yeah. He was compassionate. True love. Yeah, but they just, they make him out to be extremely meek and wild and where he was accepting of everything, everyone, and he only hung out with sinners. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that I read on Facebook from supposed believers. But you shared that scripture the other week. Yeah. And you said, if, you know, the world hated me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. And, and again, it just, it, it scares me. Yeah. If I'm seeing like a lot of these, you know. He spoke truth. Jesus was the truth. And if I'm seeing a lot of ministries or Christian ministries or churches that the world loves them. I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. I'm concerned. Anyway, just to get back on the the, <laughs> the, the idea that we started with, Laura, we're, we've got to come out of this world system. Yeah. Uh, Christianity was not designed, again, to fit into the world. God built a plan that required when we hear the message, when we see the light, so to speak, and are born again, our job at that point is to, is to come out of the world system. Yeah. But yet, I just, you know, I want to blow the whistle here on this thing because it's, it's, it's burdening me down that in the average Christian's life or the average church around the world, I shouldn't say around the world because there's a lot of like countries where the church is strong in communist countries and in, yeah. in places where the church is persecuted yeah, yeah, and they die. I mean, somebody said when a Muslim converts to Christianity through an encounter with Jesus, it very well, it could cost it them will their life. potentially cost them their life at yeah. some point in yeah. so many cases. But it's just looking around the world with those countries as an, as an exception, you just see this, this idea that, you know, we're in the world and, and there's not much separation between the church and the world. And folks, I want to just tell you today, we are deceived. I mean, we have, we have, bought into a lie yeah. that is not only not scriptural, it has produced such a, now a condition and church culture where, like you said, Laura, there is no power. Yeah. There is no, uh, no, none of the miraculous. And, you know, this goes hand in hand with a lot of the, the, the churches that have bought into just a partial gospel and they don't believe literally that, the church is the body of Christ yeah, in the earth. Yeah. But be, when all those things come together, we have a church, you know, that is watered down to the point there is no line of distinction between the world and the church. Yeah. I said this, what, several years ago, I said, if you line up 50 Christians and 50 people in the world that are unsaved, unregenerate, not church, put them all in a, in a room and mix them all up, 
and just ask them how they live their everyday lives. Mm. Just survey them, see what they, you know, what they watch, yeah. entertainment, music, how they handle their money, mm. how they do their health, how <laughs> what they do with their kids. You're going to find that at a group of, of 100 mm. people, 50 Christians, 50 worldly people, you're not going to see much difference, yeah. you know, at least in this American culture. Yeah. And Laura, that is a problem. It is. You know, that is a huge problem problem. So we've got to hear this message. Somebody came up to me the other day after when I was preaching and they said, we need this message again in the church. Because at one point, even in our country, it was probably more a part of the church, obviously, than it is now, that we're we're supposed to come out of the world. We're supposed to live differently. We're supposed to believe differently. We're supposed to have different results. Yeah. And it's like that message now is coming back yeah. to the forefront. I see it in the body of Christ, but it's it's coming more. I believe the spirit of the Lord yeah. is dealing with pastors and churches and people mm. all over the world to say it's time. Yeah. Uh, if the world's going to see a demonstration of glory, glory. we mm. have got to start functioning as the body of Christ. Now, yeah. Laura, some people may say, oh, the church is just there to help you and to encourage you or, or to help you deal with all your challenges. No. Read the scriptures. The church is there to equip That's people it. to develop and receive receive and develop and release Christ in the earth. That's it. That is the That's purpose it. of the church. You know, if you're a church that you're a part of, that's not their model. You might need to Find pray and ask church. the Lord. Either pray for your pastors and leaders and ask God to reveal to them the, the, the way that he wants them to go or find somewhere that is following. They're preaching, Laura, the uncompromised word of God. Yeah. You know, I, I've had my share of going through cycles in ministry and life where you, you know, you tend to draw back and you don't want to, you know, give the truth because you think the truth will run people off. Yeah. Which tells me the culture of the mm -hmm. church is we're more uh, interested in keeping people than we are actually developing a body of power. Yeah. You know, a body or a church that's, that's filled want. with God's power. Let me, let me end with this. Mm -hmm. It is God's plan. I'll say it this way. God's plan for the world is the church. Now, you and I may look out and say the church, they're, although they're doing good in so many areas, they're not appealing to the world enough, obviously, to have them to come in and listen, we don't want them to just come in and leave unchanged, right? We want them to come in and encounter the power of the living yeah. Savior. We just celebrated Easter, mm. you know, and what is that? It's, it's the day that we celebrate that, that reminds us that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah. Amen. That's what people, the world, in the, the people in the world need to see, Laura. Yeah. They need to see a risen Savior operating through his body. Amen. And I'll tell you, in order for that to happen, we've got to come out of the world. We, we've got to operate solely under God's authority and in his word. And, and, and church, believers, pastors, it's time. It's always uh -huh. been time, but now it's high time. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to get this thing, uh, you know, done the right way so that yeah. we can usher in the return of Christ Amen. and fulfill our destiny. Yeah. Amen. And just, we'll have a lot of time in eternity. It's eternity, right? And let's, let's do the things maybe that we have in our heart more so over there. But now in this short breath of space that we have called time, let's do what God's called us to do. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Don't make your life about earthly things. Make it about, like you said, Lord, heavenly things. Yeah. Amen. Hope you received that today. Man, what a powerful word. Let's come out of the world. Amen. Yeah. We love you, and we'll see you next week. God bless.